The following video is for entertainment purposes only. If you'd like to train in martial arts, please seek the instruction of a certified instructor. The knife. Simple, practical, and not something you want to be on the receiving end of. The thing that separates the knife from other weapons is its availability and widespread use. Knives are everywhere, and everyone has used them at some point. Chopping veggies for dinner? Grab a kitchen knife. Opening the package from Amazon? Better pull out your pocket knife. In this video, I want to look at some good and not so good practices that you should consider when learning new knife defense techniques. As always, if something doesn't click or you feel like the technique doesn't work, Ask questions. Your instructor should be able to answer any questions you have about a technique they are teaching. And if they can't, or you still feel like the technique doesn't work, do with that information what you will. Also, temper your expectations. I don't teach full weapon disarms and defense techniques online because it gives off the impression that if you do these moves, you will walk away without a scratch. And that's not the impression I want to give. The reality is that if you are attacked with a knife, you will be cut. I have marker fights in my dojang before we go over any knife defense to show how difficult it is to keep from getting cut in a defense situation involving a knife. On top of that, if someone wants to harm you with a knife, they often will keep it hidden until the actual attack begins. So the first and best defense is situational awareness, not putting yourself in a situation that could put yourself in danger in the first place. The following advice is only to be applied in a situation where you're in close quarters to someone who has a knife and you are aware of it and don't have a straight exit path. With that out of the way, let's begin. Do find an exit as quickly as possible. Hell no. Don't stay in an area longer than necessary. Unlike a gun, if you get away from your attacker with a knife, it dramatically lowers the chance of your attacker hurting you with that weapon. This is why knife attacks often come once the victim has their back against a wall or are backed into a corner. Of course, the best defense is not letting yourself be put in that corner in the first place, but if you found yourself there, your first priority should be putting distance between you and your attacker, not finishing the fight or anything like that. Do wrap your arms in a jacket or clothing if possible, or use the backs of your arms. If you have the chance to wrap your arms in layers, do so. The more layers you have, the more protection you will have from the blade. However, since knife attacks typically happen in the blink of an eye, this more often than not will not be an option. When blocking a knife attack, it is better to do it with the backs of your arms since they don't have the vulnerable blood vessels that the undersides of your arms do. Don't focus on disarming. Bruh. Once again, knife attacks happen so fast it's often detrimental to focus on disarming the attackers instead of just getting away. I have taught and do teach certain knife disarms that focus on wrist control, but even that can be dangerous because of the flexibility of the wrist and how close you are to putting your hand to the blade. It's not that there are no situations where wrist lock disarms are needed, but overall your objective should be to put distance between you and the attacker. Do find an improvised weapon if possible. The more space between you and the attacker, the better. An improvised weapon like a broom, a pipe, a folding chair can do just that. The less flesh you put in the game, the less that gets cut. Do your best to use your weapon and create an opening for an escape. Don't grab the blade. I, mm -mm. I see this a lot, and I was even taught this at a certain point in my martial arts journey. But the more I learn about applicable self-defense, the more I realize there's really no reason to do this. If it is a double-sided blade, it should be obvious why you shouldn't. However, due to the fast pace and high stress of the situation, trying to grab a single-sided blade will more than likely lead you to further injuries. If by the grace of God you found yourself controlling the arm or wrist of an attacker, it would be easier and better at that point to break a joint or uh, just push them away and flee. Make escape your priority. Do prepare yourself to do what it takes to survive. No one wants to think about gouging someone's eyes or breaking someone's joints, 
Well, some people do, but we don't really talk to them. However, it is important to mentally prepare yourself to do what it takes to survive a life and death situation. When an attacker is looking for a victim, they are often looking for someone who they don't think will fight back. Most people when faced with a deadly situation freeze up because they don't know what to do. They've never even contemplated being in a situation like this. So. I'm not telling you to spend your whole life on edge waiting for an attack like a keg of powder ready to blow. But from time to time, think about what it would be like in a deadly situation and comes to terms with what you would need to do to survive. Don't clamp down on a knife with your neck. I can't believe I'm having to say this, but I have seen videos online where someone clamps down on a knife with their neck to do a disarm. Uh. This is not so unusual, right? Guy coming up behind, knife to the guy, knife to the knife to the guy's throat. Hands are behind you, dude. As long as the knife doesn't slide in his throat, it's harmless. Can't use his hands to disarm me. What's he gonna do? He's got to use his chin. So watch what how he does it. Do it slowly. He traps it with his chin, and what he does then is he turns into my hand. And the torque actually takes the knife out of my hand. Now, Never do this. Knife defense is about keeping the blade away from vital areas of your body, like the neck, uh, the uh, blood vessels, your internal organs, your stomach, your abdomen area. Uh, you have your rib cage, so if you get sliced across your rib cage, it's less likely to get to your internal organs, though if you do get stabbed, it can go through. But, you know, you shouldn't want to get sliced or cut or anything. That should, you know, that's against. But, anyways, what I'm saying, don't. Put the blade against your neck. That's counterproductive. It's very bad. Never do this. Lastly, do question your teachings when it comes to knife defense. That includes me and this video. Trying to prepare for something that you've never experienced is difficult. If something you have been taught doesn't feel right, it probably isn't. Don't be afraid to say this doesn't make sense or tweak it more to make sense to you. Thank you for making it through this video. Quarantine has been rough and I've never been interested in making content where I sit in front of a computer and talk. No offense to people that make that kind of content, I enjoy watching it, I just don't want to make it that often. That being said, I need people to make my videos, both on screen and behind the scenes. That is why I'm super stoked about being so close to a thousand subs. If I can monetize this channel, I can use that money to increase the production value of future videos. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to pseudo that like button, call coop that subscribe button, and don't forget the bell. I'll see you next time. Peace.